Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles show in West Hollywood and I'm here with David with his movie, The Light in the Afternoon. Let's take a look at a clip. Shannon, c'est moi. Euh, bon, bah, je sais pas si t'as changé de numéro. Euh, je t'ai vu passer hier à Saint-Michel et... Je sais pas, je me demandais si t'avais envie de prendre un verre. Voilà, je t'embrasse, ciao. Bon, on se demande pas de nouvelles, hein. Les trois gosses, le boulot dans le marketing, tout ça. David, congratulations sur ton film. Uh, thank you for taking us on this wondrous journey of love. Um, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Um, it's about a <clears throat> guy in Paris who meets a next girlfriend of his that he hasn't met for seven years. Mm -hmm. And basically they both remember who they were at the time and what they expected out of life. Mm -hmm. And so the story of the movie is, is uh, how they are after this idealism seven years later mm -hmm. and what's going to come of it. Mm -hmm. Because he says, ah, but idealism is about going to America and stuff. Yeah. And then she says, okay, you want to go to America? Let's do it. And the story of the film is whether they're going to do it or not and how. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing when you, you, know, you see that journey of them seven years later and, mm -hmm. and like you say, where they are. Uh, where did the inspiration come for you in making this film? Um, I've, always, I've always been fascinated by, by idealism that is the... the what you demand out of life mm -hmm. and what is it that makes us as a species expect stuff from life that comes from somewhere but we don't exactly know where. It could come from books that we've read or it come from inside. We don't know exactly why. Yeah. And uh, people have this very strong expectation of life when they're young mm -hmm. and then what happens when they go older and when they confront a life it is something that has uh, always fascinated me, so I wanted to do a film about that. It really is, and I love it because you kind of make us ask the question of ourselves, like, what if yeah. I did this? What if I do this? And then here you see these two people, and it's like they, they, fate, they give themselves a decision to make and which, where they, which way they're going to go. And it's fascinating because, you know, we never know what we're going to be influenced by, and, uh, you know, it does make you question life. I certainly felt that by watching your film. Um, now, obviously, you've got to get, you know, two people that can develop that relationship and, and show that relationship they've had, that they've been together. Uh, how was the casting process for you? Uh, <clears throat> the casting was very special. First of all, for, uh, for Moena, the actress, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of... Of, of actresses from big agencies in Paris mm -hmm. and it didn't exactly work uh, for various reasons. It's difficult to know why exactly, but it didn't really like was work with the characters. Um, so what I did uh, was to open this into um, a, a, a website called Let It Cast that doesn't exist anymore, mm -hmm. where people submit self-tapes. Oh, right. So I like to do that because it, it really opens up the casting to people that you wouldn't be able to see. Yeah. Because seeing people in real casting it takes at least 15 minutes or something. You can't have an actor come in and then take them for like three minutes. It's just disrespectful. Yeah. So basically you have to limit who you see mm -hmm. through agencies or stuff. And I to open up, I think it's more democratic. So yeah. basically we received a lot of cell tapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, among, the, there were like four people that were interesting to us mm -hmm. and we had them come at, I mean, face to face. Mm -hmm. And when I saw her, it was, it was her kind you of right away. That. And well, the story of the casting for the male character is, is, uh, is special because basically I casted somebody and after months of casting, I casted somebody and then it didn't really work. After like three rehearsals, it just didn't work, really work and we both knew it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he He's a friend and he said, ah, maybe you should try to do it yourself. And I'm not sure whether it was some kind of joke or not, but I ended up doing it because I think it's an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't consider myself as an actor uh, and I don't think I'm going to act in other people's movies. But for this one, it was necessary it's, uh, to some extent. I mean, I didn't find anybody else. So I did it for that reason. What was that like being in your own film? 
Uh, the main thing that's difficult is, is for me, the currency of directing mm -hmm. is perspective. You have to have perspective on what you do. Mm -hmm. Out its point of view, basically. And when you act in it, it's very difficult to look at the monitor and say, okay, this is going this direction. Maybe I should try this. Maybe I should correct the direction in this way or this way. You can't do this because you're in it. Mm -hmm. So you... You can't really, it's difficult to judge yourself and to correct self. You have to let go to some extent, but not completely. Yeah. But you have to, to some extent. So I think you're difficult. a great actor because the thing is, is that you're, you have an openness to respond to, you, you know, acting is reacting and, you mm. know, you certainly have that, the, these moments, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite amazing actually that you say, oh, I don't consider myself an actor because you, you know, you really do get in there. But I think when you're open to, the surroundings and the environment and what you're going through and what your character's going through, it's, you know, you, you just respond to the given situation, you know? Yeah, we um, worked a lot on this uh, uh, for the dialogue, not to feel uh, like it's, it's red or like regurg regurgitated or something. Yeah. But in the end, what we say in the movie is quite close. It's not exactly, but it's quite close to what was written. Uh, but it, it, it had to not feel like that. Mm -hmm. And so the way I memorized um, the... Uh, I didn't memorize the text, I memorized the ideas. So basically each take, I set the text differently with different words. And I always try to do this with other actors too. Mm -hmm. I tell them, don't respect the text. The text has to be... Um, free and you have to be free with the text mm -hmm. and I tried to do that too and that's why I memorized the text with images in my head mm -hmm. and not with actual words yeah yeah a, a, a wondrous film philosopher I love it I could I could listen to your your wondrous techniques all day um what what I'm um, obviously there was certain things I'm sure you found more challenging than others was there something that was there a particular challenge that you had in making this one well th for me the main challenge that this movie is really dialogue heavy mm -hmm. and it's very it was very important to me to have um, uh, we had two cameras because we needed to catch moments some sometimes things happen especially when you're free with the text and, and the way I act and I ask my actress to act is very free so sometimes uh, they stick with the general lines mm -hmm. but the words and the lines can change mm -hmm. and sometimes the atmosphere of the takes can change a lot so it's, it was important to have two cameras and when you have two cameras uh, it's a little more difficult to um, be very free with the way it's shot because mm -hmm. they have to follow and stuff and the fact that I was acting in it make, made it more difficult for me to tell to, to indicate to the cinematographer to try to pick that up and stuff. Mm. And I wouldn't look at the takes between, between takes. So it was difficult uh, to be very free with the way I uh, shot this film. So I think the main challenge for me in this film was to make the film uh, visually um, interesting and, and to help the narration visually. Mm -hmm. I shot a lot of other shots that were more visually original, but it didn't really quite work because of execution issues, mm -hmm. because of budget, budget issues mm -hmm. and the way we were prepared and stuff. So only some of those ended up in the movie. We had the, the shots where we follow her um, walking in Saint-Michel in Paris, but a lot of other shots, uh, top-down shots and stuff were, or scooter shots, and I didn't find a really uh, adequate way to include this in the, into the narration that I had to ditch them because I didn't want to include them just because I thought they were, they looked nice and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, the narration is the important thing. Yeah. So that's No, it. well, I mean, the narration, but, you know, I think visually you also let us imagine and take mm -hmm. our, run our imaginations wild as well, which was mm -hmm. really quite beautiful to watch. Um, what... What, what's it like? Because, I mean, you know, this is amazing. It's like this film is, is, is just, you know, it's just beautifully French. I just love it. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's wondrous. What is it like traveling over here to Los Angeles and, and having your film, new filmmakers LA? What's it like to have your film up there on a big screen? Well, it, it's always great to see, um, first to see it on a big screen with a lot of people and to, 
sense where people react. Yeah. Um, and there was, I, I felt a bit of steam going out after the character shouts. And I like that because uh, it's both theorists and both, um, it's a climax where the things build up. Yeah. And then it's nice to have people um, chuckle a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it's a dramatic moment. Yeah. Um, and I actually wanted that, so I'm happy that it happened that way. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and the movie, uh, for, for some reason, it was more liked in the US than in France. Um, well, we, we, we love it, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly why, but there were a lot of festivals and people and stuff who really liked the movie. And in France, I had some reaction like that, but maybe less. Maybe it's because the Americans are more communicative and stuff, or maybe it's because they, 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 they like the movie more. I'm not sure exactly. Well, I adore French film. I mm. adore French film. I really mm. do. But I think, I, think it, I think we maybe appreciate it more than the because we don't see the depths of kind of a love poetic story as much as, as, as what you guys produce, you know, very organically and wonderfully well yeah. a lot. And I think you, you take us on a journey that we don't normally go to as much in American cinema. You yeah, know, maybe we appreciate. Yeah, it. I mean, there's there's great films in in America too, including deep films. But it, um, I mean, French cinema has bad press in France. Yeah, a lot of people who are not in the business in France, they dis they dislike not all French movies, but they tend to think that the French uh, tend to do movies that are overly intellectual and and boring and which lack narration and there's a love love of American cinema mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in in France and I think part of the reason why we have this I don't know uh, somewhat dislike of, of French cinema in France is because there are many movies like that and some movies are French in a good way mm -hmm. and some movies are French in a bad way they tend to uh, take the intellectualism too far mm. and the aesthetism too far and well sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so well you were definitely french in a good way we loved Thanks it very so much. you know we absolutely <laughs> loved it no seriously it was it was a a really great journey for us and uh, what what's next for you um well i just finished shooting my fourth short film oh my goodness which is, you're uh, busy busy uh, yeah which is in english mm -hmm. it's a comedy of well it's lubitsch Woody Allen like comedy mm -hmm. that's shot in Paris but in English with mm -hmm. uh, English actors. Um, and I just finished writing uh, uh, what is, I hope, going to be my first feature screenplay. Fantastic. Uh, and it got great reviews in the blacklist. So I'm Fantastic. also here to, I don't know, talk about it. Well, we, uh, we, will, it. we will get to see it. We, we love your talent and, and thank you for sharing your film. And, yeah, um, thank you. We all here, all the crew want to go to Paris, like probably tomorrow. So, you know, let's book our flights, guys. Let's do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah. Give thank me you. Call. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, it. Congratulations. Thanks to you.